Welcome back. Well, with us right now is Fred Ajarian, who is a director with the El Toro Water District. He's been with us many times. Welcome yeah. back. Good morning, Ken. How are you? It's good to be here. It's nice to see you. And I think um, we're going to talk about several things here. But, you know, since the last time I saw you, certainly the situation in the state has gotten much, much better as far as our uh, water goes, right? And exactly, Ken. In terms of uh, rain and drought, uh, I mean, in terms of rain and snowpack, uh, we've seen a, a big turnaround, which is good. Uh, so far, we're, we're ahead uh, in, in the north, and perhaps if we could go to the first slide yeah. here. Yeah, we'll we've got some photos here to show. Might be able to get to it. So, yes, this is, this is almost like last year's El Nino got delayed and we got it this year instead. Yeah, exactly. So, just a sampling of pictures from uh, up north, uh, rainfall on the freeways here in right. Los Angeles. This is Arrowhead. This is uh, up north in the Sierras. This is definitely way up north in the Sierras. And this is a little bit of flooding because of <coughs> abundant rainfall yeah. uh, in the uh, north end of the state. So, it's... Uh, uh, we're supposed to be in a La Nina situation, which mm -hmm. is typically a lot less water than right. El Nino. So Mother Nature sometimes throws you a curveball. Yeah, exactly. So. And we'll, we'll certainly see going forward, but with some of the good news, especially where we need it up in the Sierras, uh, I was uh, mentioning the other day that Mammoth area has record snowfall and yes. they have more snow, yes. at, at least in their ski resort area, in the area, than mm -hmm. any other ski resort in the country right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think I heard somewhere in the neighborhood of like 325 inches of snow yes. so far this year. exactly. No, like that's in the Mammoth area anyway. And, yeah. and for Mammoth and all the local snow resorts, um, yeah. it's, it's that, that base is gonna be, it's gonna stay with us probably through May or early Oh yeah, or, and that's what you want. May, which is right, yeah. which is what you want, which is yeah. great for the economy and also great in terms of replenishing the local water supplies that have been so badly depleted over yeah. the last six years. Yeah. But, uh, Perhaps if we could go to the yeah, next slide Yeah, the next slide, slide about uh, atmospheric river. Yes. I it just, I th part this is of- a good slide, I like this. Thank slide. you. Yes. Uh, part of why we've been blessed, I think, this, this go around with the, this uh, super abundance of rainfall and snow is this atmospheric <laughs> river that perhaps customers have heard about. Mm -hmm. um, typically, it's uh, an atmospheric river, as it shows here, is taps moisture coming from Hawaii, and then it transports this concentrated uh, uh, mass of vapor for thousands of miles, typically three, two to fifth, 250 to 375 miles wide, and it's just like a moving front that just wherever it goes, it drops. Yeah. Now, last year, everybody will recall that with the El Nino, all of the water vapor and all of this got shoved further north, so that's why did. we didn't see all the good right. rainfall that we're seeing and snow that we're seeing now. So because of that, we're, we're seeing uh, uh, it, record amounts of snow and, uh, excuse me, record amounts of snow and rainfall in the north. And uh, the quantity of this atmospheric river is incredible. It says here, these rivers can carry as much as 15 uh, <clears throat> Mississippi rivers and provide 50% of the west coast precipitation, which is huge. Yeah. So uh, hopefully this will continue. Uh, there have been times, however, just as a cautionary note where just as quickly, Mother Nature can turn the spigot off and we can stop. That's we true. We can technically stop by the end of this month and not have any more rain and, right. and no more snow. And anyway. So yeah, we'll I mean, see. the good news is, is uh, as far as everywhere in the state, we're already way, way above normal. So yes. if it stops or tapers off, the snow base is what we really want more than anything. Exactly, because yeah. the snow base, especially up in the Sierra it's so Nevada, thick. Uh, it, yeah. that's, that's, that supplies 30% of the state's right. water supply. Yeah. And you want that base, the thicker the better, so that as you get into the summer months, June, July, August, it trickles gently into the streams, into the rivers, and continues to feed water mm -hmm. to the north, central, and south parts of the state. So. Uh, Keep praying. We'll see. And I know uh, <laughs> at least right now, of course, we'd like to still see some more rain, but at oh, least yes. right now, Orange County uh, for the season is above normal. So Correct. if it stopped right now, we would be above normal, which is, I think, 11, 12, 13 but inches in, or something. In that range, yes. Yeah. So we're okay there, but it still would be nice to keep that going all the way through through May or, you know, it, the April showers would be great. If we could have that continued, as you just described it, continued rainfall 
gently preferably not not coming down as it did last right. week at, at a inch and a half an hour but through may that would be helpful because yeah. technically we're still in a sixth year of drought and it took a while for us to get here so some experts between caltech and ucla claim that it would take two years to fully right. replenish the groundwater basins right here in orange county as well as the state so so we'll see. Um, and in the next slide, you have uh, just kind of an overview of how California is doing yes. as far as, uh, you know, depends as far as the drought situation goes. Right. Now here uh, we're showing uh, reservoir conditions that are up. This was as of January 21st. Mm -hmm. This gets updated weekly. Okay. So our big state reservoirs that we like to focus on are Lake Oroville uh, here to the, to the north. That's at 125% of normal. San Luis Reservoir over 100% of normal. Uh, and then down here, see in, in the contrast in Southern California, Lake Paris, 47%, right. Castaic at 80%. Um, and there's one reservoir that's not listed here. This is the one over in San Jacinto. Um, that's the big reservoir for Southern California. Those are still below 100%. They're getting filled. Yeah. But uh, it's it shows the contrast that the north end of the state's doing real well in terms of uh, uh, rainfall and filling up storage. And as you see here in this picture, this is the first snowpack measurement taken earlier this month. This mm -hmm. is uh, right. uh, the uh, Frank Gerke with the, he's the chief uh, snow person that's been taking measurements here for the last 30, 35 years, along with the, uh, the press. And uh, it's, this is a marked contrast to last year's mm -hmm. uh, a very, very pitiful amount of, yeah. of, uh, of snow, snowfall that we had. So hopefully we'll continue to see more scenes like this as the months progress. That would be uh, nice. We've got about three to four months now uh, of w where we're into the peak of the season now. Right, right. Typically between November and March, 80% of the state's rainfall occurs. So we're about halfway into it. So again, hoping that Mother Nature doesn't turn that, that spigot off and we continue to see increases, especially in our local reservoirs yeah, here. exactly. So on the next page, there's a sort of a satellite image of the United States in general, of um, different areas, different regions, and things like that as far as uh, oh, the yes. weather goes. Yeah, now and this, this was taken just a few days ago. This is right, on week the 18th. Ago or so. And we we're, we're want to focus the customers here on two areas, the Colorado River Basin, which is this area, taking yes. in Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, and that's and the river, of course, here flows through here, down, yeah. and then into Mexico, and then California, the Sierra snowpack here. So uh, this, was, this shows the contrast, these areas in light, what is that, magenta, pink, yeah. I'm colorblind. Those, that, that's your snowpack there, snowpack here, snowpack here, so that's all good news. In the north, right now, we're at 136% of average with uh, April being our historical snowpack. Mm -hmm. And then here in the Colorado River, we're at 148% of normal, so things are looking up. Right. But we need it's to continue. It's gotta continue. It's gotta continue, exactly. exactly. So uh, this was just uh, to show, you know, the, the extent how big the Colorado River Basin is that we rely upon. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's a good map, definitely. And so um, hopefully, and then all of our water, of course, coming through from the south, uh, from the north, through this, through the uh, Colorado uh, Aqueduct, excuse me, the Colorado Aqueduct here, mm -hmm. the California Aqueduct here, and then of course the city of LA has their own right. supply. So, and some of that goes into, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from the Colorado Diamond Valley. Into Diamond yeah. Valley, that's the big reservoir. The area. Yes, yeah. exactly, and that's the one. That's the reservoir that was just built about uh, 15 years ago at mm -hmm. a cost of about two billion dollars. And it provides it's that's our that's our emergency storage, and it's filling and it's filling and we, we want it to fill up some more. So uh, keep we need Mother Nature to exactly continue. Helping and if you can get ever, by the way, if you can ever get out to Diamond Valley, <coughs> uh, they have a wonderful exhibit about uh, just the water systems within California, and then the building next door to it that area when they were building it, of course, there were a lot of fossils. Yes. And so you, you get kind of a two for one. You can go in there and learn about uh, the local dinosaurs in this area from, you know, a million years ago, whatever it was. And then you just walk across the area there and you have the wonderful exhibit. 
one of the interesting things, if I may, just about that area, there is also the oldest known um, rancho, uh, it's an adobe that was built uh, in the area uh, back in the 1850s. Ah, okay. And so uh, as you get to, to tour those, those areas that you just discussed at Diamond Valley, um, I, I don't know if that particular item has been opened up, but it is just, it's interesting. It shows how California looked back in the 1850s. Yeah. Native purple needle grass, many of the native species are still present. In oh, that's neat. I didn't adobe. see that when I was out there. Beautiful be area. Nice. So it, uh, uh, we've certainly picked a good location, ideal for storage, yeah. but ideal for recreation. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And also for historic pre geologic history and uh, Native American history as well. Uh, so, uh, fa fa yeah, they do. Um, uh, you know, when it's filled up, it's been a couple of years, but I think they d they do fishing out there. I think they stock it with. I don't know if it's bass or whatever it is, but I remember seeing everybody. All, all species of, yeah. of fish and. It's a, uh, it's a great place out there. It's <laughs> out there in Hemet. Now. Um, no swimming, though. No swimming, no. <laughs> Will California's emergency conservation regulations change? Well, um, so as we've talked about, supply conditions are improving in the north based on uh, mm -hmm. rainfall, reservoir, and snowpack storage, the key being the, res the snowpack right. storage. Now, however, California's central coast areas are still in water supply deficit. The Central Valley, the coastal areas like Santa Barbara, still having difficulty. Uh, our current regulations are set right. to expire next month, but the state is going to extend those based on information we received just yesterday through October. Uh, and uh, just to be on the safe side, because we're still... <laughs> We've been in, in, in six years of drought. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while for us to, to, to uh, get back to where we were. Um, so the state's going to reconsider in May where we're at, uh, as okay. they always do. Each month, there'll be a snowpack survey, and those results will get tabulated, and that'll determine where we're at uh, if, if uh, st supply and storage conditions are continuing to improve. The implications, however, uh, right now are unknown. We're in okay. January. Right. We really won't know until April or so. Meanwhile, the state's finalizing a conservation framework uh, for the long term once we're hopefully out of this drought, which will be in a few more years. Uh, locally, our water shortage declaration is still in effect, which is just basically the seven or eight things, you know, broom down your, 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 right. your driveway, don't hose off your, 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 your sidewalks. Um, turn off your faucets, and the outdoor drought factor at the district is at 75%. Now the board's going to be reconsidering both our level one and our drought factor based on the state's regulations and the changing water supply okay. conditions. And we're going to be reviewing that during the, uh, the uh, budgetary process that we're going through, that we're starting through right now, okay. to see how that's going to affect our budget, of course, and our ability to continue to uh, provide a reliable, dependable supply of water to our customers on a 24-7, 365 basis. Okay, uh, we have a chart that we want to show you, the, um, the savings compared to, well, now four years ago. Yes, and this chart, I think, tells the story of how a great a job our customers have mm -hmm. done, Ken. I mean, we, uh, as uh, through, through uh, December, we, our, our customers achieved 28%, so overall 27% savings, well above our right. state mandate of 24%, yeah, which is what we were great. in. Um, only one month here where we Yeah, we were, don't know what happened in February in, in 2016. February, something it, was, happened. Uh, it was very dry. <laughs> yeah, it was, that's right. Extremely yeah. dry, combination of uh, Mother Nature just turned off yeah. the faucet. So, but the rest of the time, and in part, large part, uh, our, our ability to meet the state's 24% uh, guidelines has been facilitated by our Recycle Water program. If we hadn't had that, uh, we would not be achieving as high a, a level of conservation. So between that and our customers' incredible response, we're doing very well. So thank you to all our customers, yeah. Ken, and want to encourage them to keep saving. Um, we're, we're in a different uh, uh, realm now. This. Uh, it's going to be water conservation has always been important, but it's going to be even more important as we move forward. Mm -hmm. um, we're not we're not sure, uh, you know, what what Mother Nature is exactly. going to bring. So, so well, the next slide shows uh, the recycled projects, uh, the water delivery program. 
Exactly, just speaking of recycle, we completed uh, our phase one project. This was the uh, construction of our new $35 million, 3.7 million gallon a day uh, recycled water plant. That came online in 2015. We're uh, going to start construction of our phase two project that's down in the south end of the of the of our service area, mm -hmm. uh, beginning th this year hopefully. And phase three right now we're we're studying at uh, areas uh, in and around, <coughs> excuse me, this side of El Toro Water District Service Area and the other side of the freeway, uh, Aegean Hills, okay. Lake Lake Forest. We have constant requests for from those areas for when can we have recycled water. Right now, recycled water is the hot commodity. It, mm -hmm. it is the new gold uh, for right. uh, South Orange County. And all of the other agencies are having the same challenges as we are, Ken, trying to ensure that there's enough recycled water. Um, the more recycled water we, we can use, the more we're able to stretch our uh, imported water supplies. Exactly. And uh, so, um, uh, yeah. it's, it's a continuing process for us. And this is part of the district's overall water supply enhancement and reliability program. Recycled water is just one aspect of it. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the, uh, your last slide here, it shows the joint venture project. And this is the Baker Water Treatment Plant uh, that you're doing uh, with all the other districts. Yes. And uh, this is uh, what up on um, off of uh, at, the, at the top of uh, near the foothills, right? It's in the foothills. Yeah. It's behind the uh, city hall of, of at uh, Lake uh, Lake Forest. Uh, yeah, around I, Foothill I Ranch area, right? Foothill yeah. Ranch. This facility was completed and dedicated in December of mm -hmm. last year, at a cost of 103 over 100 million dollars, and it represents a five agency uh, effort. Uh, collaborative effort, uh, mm -hmm. Ken, between our district, Irvine Ranch, Walton Aguil, Santa Margarita, and Tribuco. It, from conception to completion, I believe it took 15 years wow. to get this built. This treatment plant provides a backup in, uh, to our imported water. Normally, South Orange County gets imported water through the, uh, from the Deemer plant located mm -hmm. in Yorba Linda. If for some reason that plant goes down, and there have been uh, occasion, one or two occasions where there's been uh, cracks in the pipeline which mm -hmm. have occurred, then this is our backup here to supply South Orange County. And these are our, our agency and the other four partners that worked with us had the vision uh, yeah. and the political chutzpah to move forward spending you know, money that some would say, gosh, that's a lot of money. But yeah. You can't put a price on water reliability, Ken. This is our, our, our backup. Water industry is always looking to en enhance reliability of its supplies. Exactly. We have to because we live in a desert. If we don't, then we're not doing our jobs. Right. So um, this is a great, uh, great project. Here's a shot of our, this is all the agencies participating. And then a shot of our district. Uh, our general manager, several of our board mm -hmm. members, our assistant general manager, very proud of the team that, that works with the board to um, look and to help you know the board plan ahead and make sure that our customers are always in yeah, water. Exactly. Great to have you on. You know, if people have any questions, you can go to uh, the website, of course, and uh, you know you get all the contact information there if you want to do that. Uh, great to have you on. Right. Ken, Always thank a you so Happy much. New Year. Thank you it. for all of this. Pleasure. At least we got some compared to last year. We got positive news this we're time doing, around. We're doing really well, Ken. Yeah. So hopefully, when I come again in, in three months, uh, I'll have more news, good news to tell so. our customers. All right. Thank you, you take so care. much. Appreciate bye -bye. it. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. We'll be right back. back.